I am Dr. Nikhil Kothurkar, and I'm delighted to welcome all of you to this discussion about chemical engineering in the 21st century. Who's not excited today about the steep growth in computer science and communication related technologies, including artificial intelligence, quantum computing, internet of things, 5G and so on. But little do we realize how heavily these technologies and development in general depend on chemical engineering and the manufacturing industry. The world as we see it today would be impossible without it. We are going to learn plenty of that today, enough to realize what a bright future chemical engineers have in the 21st century. Let me introduce to you the panel for today. We have Dr. Jainarayanan, the chairperson of the Department of Chemical Engineering and Material Science, who's just the right balance of an experienced academic, an eminent researcher, and an industry person, not to mention that he's the driving force behind, behind our department. We also have Dr. Meer, Meera Balachandran, the vice, uh, vice chair, chairperson of the department, and a leading researcher in her field. She too comes with rich academic experience and industry experience. Welcome professors, we look forward to your valuable inputs. We also have with us two dashing alumni who we hope will connect better with you than us professors. We have Mr. PTR Gupta, Assistant Product Manager, Indian Oil Corporation, and he's a graduate of the batch of 2015. Uh, we also have Ms. Gopika Krishna Kumar, Product Line Manager, FL Smith Private Limited, and she is a graduate from the 2018 batch. While the session proceeds, if the members of the audience have any questions, they may please post them in the text chat. Between the professors and the alumni, we'll try our best to answer your questions in the interactive session that is towards the latter part of this session. Uh, with that said, I now call upon Dr. Jainarayanan to kindly set the ball rolling with his presentation about the department. Over to you, Dr. Jainarayanan. Thank you, Dr. Nigil. And good evening to all the participants, my colleagues, Dr. Nigil, Dr. Meera, and our alumni, Mr. Gupta and Gobiga. And it's my pleasure to give an overview of the Chemical Engineering and Material Science Department at Amruta School of Engineering, Coimbatore, and specifically about the Beta Chemical Engineering program. So let me share my slides. A warm welcome to all the participants. And on behalf of the Department of Chemical Engineering and Material Science, I'm happy to invite you to this particular webinar. And I would like to present briefly about the Chemical Engineering Department at Amrita School of Engineering, Coimbatore. So this is our uh, campus located in the foothills of uh, the Western Guards, in the calm and very serene atmosphere, conducive for uh, uh, the learning. And let me start with the history and the milestones of the department. We started uh, in the year 1999 with the Beta Chemical Engineering Program. And in 2007, we shifted to the BTEC Chemical Engineering, rather in 1999, BTEC Polymer Engineering Program. And in 2007, we shifted to the BTEC Chemical Engineering, which is a much more general uh, engineering program. And the first batch rolled out uh, in 2011. In 2013, uh, we received the funding from uh, the Center uh, for the Center of, of Excellence in Advanced Materials and Green Technologies from the erstwhile MHRD and currently the Ministry of Education. And 2015, we started the MTech program, PG program in material science and engineering. And in 2018, uh, the DST awarded the FIS grant for infrastructure improvement. In the year 2019, the BTEC chemical engineering program was accredited by NBA. And in the same year, we got the institution of eminence from UGC, which gave a lot of flexibility uh, in uh, deciding our curriculum and uh, governance. And very recently, in 2021, we received the highest grade from NAC, the A++ grade uh, from uh, the NAC. And uh, I would like to inform you that only less than one percentage of the universities has this highest grade of A++ from NAC. And the department, uh, uh, at a glance, if you see, we have three programs the beta chemical engineering with an intake of 60, uh, the MTech material science and engineering program with an intake of 18. And we also have the PhD program in chemical engineering and material science. We have highly qualified faculty 
who have uh, PhD and masters from uh, acclaimed universities in, uh, and institutes in India from Europe as well as from uh, United States of America. And as I already mentioned, we are uh, having a center of excellence in advanced materials and green technologies. And our uh, department is uh, DST FIS sponsored. And we have uh, funding to the tune of 16 crores, received funding to the tune of 16 crores from the uh, government agencies as well as from the industry. The national recognition for the department, as I was already mentioning, uh, from the Ministry of Education, as well as from the uh, DST, the Ministry of Education uh, has uh, awarded the Center of Excellence in Advanced Materials and Green Technologies. Uh, the objective of this particular funding is to encourage uh, multidisciplinary and translational research so that we can deliver technology, uh, translational research, we can uh, uh, deliver technology as well as uh, products for the societal benefits and make India a world leader in the area uh, of various thrust areas with significant social impact. And later in 2018, a major funding for the improvement in science and technology infrastructure we received. And in that we could procure a very good equipment for boosting our research activities. Coming to the faculty strength, uh, we have uh, a faculty 90% of our faculty are having this PhD from uh, acclaimed universities from uh, India as well as from abroad. And if you see the uh, specialization, it ranges from the core chemical engineering, then energy systems, material science and engineering, nanotechnology, environmental engineering, environmental science, pharmaceutical technology, and uh, polymer technology. And most of our faculty are having industry experience as well. And they have put in, say, at an average of 15 years of experience uh, at Amrita. Coming to the curriculum design and development, we take inputs from the experts, in the National Academia, International Academia, experts from the R&D labs. Uh, we get the feedback from our employers. We have uh, alumni presence in our board of studies. In fact, Mr. Gupta is one of the Board of Studies member. So the inputs and the feedback from all these people are used to make our uh, uh, curriculum current and updated. Some of the very salient features of the current beta chemical engineering curriculum is that we have uh, the chemical engineering lab uh, integrated math courses. That is a uh, very important feature of this particular curriculum. Earlier, there was a lot of disconnect between the uh, math theory and how it is being applied in engineering. So currently, we are having uh, the lab sessions for the even for the math, wherein the students are going to get trained in MATLAB with specific problems in chemical engineering. A lot of emphasis on design dedicated courses for the heat and mass transfer equipments used in the industry. And since the chemical engineers are to work with a lot of process data, there is a dedicated course on statistical analysis of process data. The students are also exposed to this chemical engineering software lab courses. A lot of electives with industry focus. And students are also allowed to take electives from other engineering streams, but it has relevance to uh, the chemical engineering and allied uh, engineering. And another important feature is the live-in labs, which gives a multidisciplinary experiential learning for the students in real world settings, which I'll be talking about in the uh, slides later. Coming to the facilities, the academic laboratories are very well equipped. We have the mass transfer lab, we have the chemical reaction engineering lab with all the necessary equipments. Then we have the chemical technology lab, the mechanical operations lab, the fluid mechanics lab, and the strength of materials lab. I have not mentioned about the computational facilities available here. Uh, and uh, Amrita, as you know, having a lot of uh, computing facilities and the students are allowed to utilize that even beyond the regular uh, college hours. 
And coming to another very important, distinctive, and unique uh, feature is about the uh, research facilities that is available in uh, uh, in our department. That is the Center of Excellence in Advanced Materials and Green Technologies, which encourages multi and cross disciplinary collaborations. And the research is more of translational in nature, delivering the technology and product to the society and other stakeholders. And a significant investment of around eight crores has gone into the constituent labs, namely the central research facility, the polymers and nanocomposites lab, the function, advanced functional materials lab, nanomaterials, solar energy, energy systems, energy materials and devices. So most of our faculty are working in uh, these streams and which are very much relevant in the uh, 21st century. And some of the advanced characterization facilities, which uh, many of the other institutes cannot speak about, like the scanning electron microscope or the X-ray diffraction, uh, diffractometer, uh, gas chromatography, then uh, the FTIR, the Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy, spectrometer, UV visible spectrometer, uh, then the differential scanning calorimeter. The UG students, uh, are also allowed to uh, and encouraged to make use of these facilities in order to hone the research uh, and the technical skills. And if you see the, the research uh, uh, thrust areas, one is these energy systems. Uh, as you know, the technology associated with the renewable and alternate energy sources is gaining a lot of significance in the current setup when the uh, conventional fossil fuels are getting depleted. And a lot of emphasis on solar cells and that to desensitized solar cells, supercapacitors, hydrogen production, the flow batteries where the chemical energy is getting converted into the electrical energy, the solid state lithium batteries, and the conversion of the plastic waste as well as the biomass into fuel and biodiesel production. And we have uh, received significant funding from the government agencies, as well as from the industries which are indicated below. Another major research area is the polymers and polymer nanocomposites. As you know, since the last two decades, there has been a lot of work in substituting the conventionally used uh, materials with the polymers and the composites, especially polymer nanocomposites. And uh, due to their low density, and weight reduction is going to be a significant parameter, especially in uh, industries like automobile and aerospace sectors. Uh, we are uh, developing new materials which can which cater to the needs of aerospace, nuclear, as, uh, energy and semiconductor, and for structural applications. And uh, our faculty are also um, uh, making use of this uh, optimization techniques for optimizing the polymer processes. And another area is the recycling, where the plastic littering is going to be a problem. We, are, we have developed technology and products by which uh, we can convert the plastic waste into some very useful products. In this area also, we have received significant funding from uh, ISRO, the Indian Space Research Organization, uh, Department of Atomic uh, Energy, then also from uh, DST, Department of Science and Technology. Another important area is the, as far as the chemical engineers are concerned, the core chemical engineers are concerned is the process intensification, which is a strategy for making dramatic improvements in the manufacturing and processing uh, in, uh, chemical, in chemical engineering, substantially decreasing the equipment size to output ratio, uh, decreasing the waste generated and decreasing the energy consumption by making changes in the, uh, going to the smaller geometry, microfluidic interactions using very high pressures. And uh, this is a very strong team, including our uh, Dean Engineering is also a part of this particular research team. And uh, the microchannel heat exchangers, the packed bed electrochemical reactors, uh, large scale energy storage systems and solar distillation are some of the research themes in which this uh, group of people work. And here also we have received significant funding from industry especially from LAM research, which is the third largest in semiconductor industry in the world from Hindustan, HPCL, Hindustan Petroleum Corporation Limited and DST 
uh, also we have funded uh, the projects submitted by our faculty. And last but not the least, the sustainable resource management, the managing the resources in such a way that uh, these resources are not going to be depleted and uh, the future generations are going to get benefited. In uh, this area, the themes include the monitoring, the real-time monitoring of the water and soil uh, and uh, technology for the contaminants removal from water and wastewater treatment by electro coagulation and advanced oxidation. And uh, we have also developed biodegradable sanitary napkins, our faculty, and uh, skill and capacity building in order to create the environment awareness among the people. And also to uh, create certain products which are generated from the waste uh, which are naturally occurring and create certain products from that so that the, uh, some of the tribal communities and all will get benefited from the um, uh, such products, selling just such products. Again, talking about uh, another strength of our department is a strong uh, in industry consultancy, which we are having, as I already mentioned from the land research, from the Hindustan Petroleum Corporation Limited, the Australian mines, especially in the uh, electrodes for the batteries, Axon Electric, again, in the lithium batteries side, and uh, the waste management and water treatment for the Chinu Salton and VGAD, which is an uh, uh, industry in the electrical engineering, electrical domestic appliances sector. And uh, uh, they are also funding uh, us, uh, giving consultancy projects to us. And how this is going to benefit the students? The students are going to take part in this research activities and the consultancy activities. And they are able to publish in uh, very good uh, journals and which is going to be a launch pad for them in their research career. And also they get into industries which have a lot of focus on research. And uh, the, just to indicate the names which I have made in bold here are all UG students and they have published in some of the top notch uh, journals in the energy area. And you can also see in the material science area. We are having very good collaboration with uh, experts uh, uh, in the research and other uh, institutes in India as well as from abroad. And the students also get enough opportunities to interact along with the faculty with these experts and they're all uh, highly acclaimed uh, researchers in their field and they get a chance to work with these people and produce joint publications or to go to such universities and spend time with these people uh, in the internship program. And these are some of the outstanding collaborators where we have some joint research projects are also being uh, proposals have been submitted and they are co-investigators in our research projects. And as I was mentioning, due to these connections and we have a very strong uh, in, in international for a department for the international uh, exchange programs, collaborating with the other universities, our students go to the various universities in Europe uh, in, the, in the USA, as well as in the other uh, uh, Far East, country, Far East uh, nations like Singapore, uh, they get a chance to work there for two to six months. And uh, I have indicated a few of those, those who have gone to Japan, to Germany, then uh, to Israel, then to UK as part of their internship or exchange programs. Apart from that, we also encourage the students to take the graduate aptitude test in engineering in order to pursue their postgraduate programs uh, in top-notch institutes like IITs and IAS in India, as well as this uh, GATE, uh, uh, a very good rank in GATE is also going to help them to get jobs in uh, PSUs like uh, in the, uh, the Navratna companies, the Hindustan Petroleum Corporation, or the Indian Oil Corporation. And they are also, uh, this, uh, the GATE score is also going to help them 
in the uh, mtech programs in iits and thereby getting into again good companies these are some of the uh, institutes and the universities to which our students have uh, gone for the postgraduate program and uh, my phd programs in almost all the iits we have uh, the, the our students have gone to the various iits in india and also to uh, the very good universities abroad for their masters as well as their phd and their uh, postdoctoral programs also and these are some of the industries who regularly recruit our students like the reliance uh, industries then uh, the 3m hindustan unilever limited the asian paints general electric technip sanmar carbondum universal and the students are also getting chance to uh, appear for uh, the software companies if they are interested to join the software companies a, a large number of companies are uh, coming to amrita and they are also allowed to appear for uh, Uh, or getting into the software companies or students other than that uh, the ex the co curricular activities we are having a very active student chapter of the federation of indian petroleum industry and as a part of that they are able to take part in the various uh, competitions conducted by the other student chapters uh, of iache or aache in other institutes and our students regularly participate in this uh, events and uh, they have got many awards also and we have our own one uh, national level uh, tech fest and events are being conducted and our alumni uh, regularly participate or conduct such events from the major industries and uh, we are also having uh, participation of some of the research uh, institutes like this uh, uh, indira gandhi center for atomic research they uh, the students get get benefited from the workshops conducted by uh, such eminent scientists coming to the facilities for the extra curricular activities uh, we have uh, well equipped uh, facilities for the indoor as well as the outdoor games and then olympic standard Uh, swimming pool we are having and lot of uh, uh, clubs for like ananta maria asta to hone their skills in uh, the mathematics physics then uh, in yoga then we are having uh, the clubs for the, like the nati sudha and the raga sudha for uh, on, uh, for uh, uh, the music as well as dance coming to some of the alumni uh, some eminent alumni the hariyas ganesh was our first batch student and he joined the ms program or mtech program in iisc and then he proceeded for a phd at ut austin and he had two stints of uh, this postdoctoral research in uh, two different us universities and very recently he joined uh, the iit gandhinagar as a faculty parvati is another bright student of the first batch student who was awarded the rising star by the royal academy of engineering uh, while he was working in petrofac and later she joined uh, another uh, industry the dow chemicals a very well known industry krishnarka another one alumni he is having two indian patents currently he is about to complete his phd from uh, iit madras Vishu Kannan, in a record time, in four and a half years after B Tech, he completed his PhD, and he is a uh, co-founder of Surge Analytics, who are into the modeling of uh, the battery systems in uh, Singapore. He took his PhD from the National University of Singapore, and there are several students, or several of our alumni rather, who are uh, based in US, working in leading companies like Aspen, Intel. uh they are also into research some are postdoctoral researchers abbot uh, then uh, micron technology micron technology asm uh, the chemical engineers are having a uh, lot of opportunities in semiconductor companies as well as uh, um, medical industry healthcare industry 
I was mentioning about this Levin Labs. Levin Labs uh, is a experiential learning process where multidisciplinary teams go to villages for the benefit of these uh, tribals or these uh, uh, villagers and to find solutions for their problems. One such, uh, I would like to highlight one such uh, case where a team from uh, Amrita, majorly uh, from the chemical engineering, visited a district in Wayanad, uh, where they are having 25 acres of this lemongrass grown. And they were using some traditional technology for uh, uh, obtaining this lemongrass oil by the distillation process, a conventional distillation process by burning the firewood and the yield also was very less. So our team went there and they converted this distillation process they, by a solar system generation unit and increased the yield and generated, uh, which allowed these tribals to get huge revenue from this uh, naturally occurring uh, uh, lemongrass. And uh, this particular solar distillation unit is currently working and uh, that way we could solve the problem of that tribal community living in that district. Another significant uh, contribution from the chemical engineering students was to address this water crisis problem in a remote village in Jharkhand. And a unique feature here is that they could solve this problem and they could also publish uh, the work in a very uh, high quality journal uh, very recently. And the students who have gone there, currently they are uh, they have gone for an MS program in Australia. And especially in this pandemic time, some of the COVID-19 initiatives I would like to highlight, especially in the second wave of this COVID, uh, many people died because of this, uh, they did not get uh, the oxygen. And the oxygen concentrator project, uh, even by the Indian Navy, it was completed in a record time of one and a half months. And a uh, prototype was developed and the technology has been already transferred. And uh, the, the two important people in that particular oxygen concentrator project was our uh, faculty. As you know, this biomedical waste is also a significant problem, especially in this uh, pandemic time in COVID-19 period. And uh, the PPE kit uh, uh, disposal is a major problem. A technology was developed to replace cement with this shredded uh, PPE waste and combine it with sand to, by a thermomechanical process to convert it into the construction block. And this was uh, developed uh, uh, as a collaborative work with the civil engineering department. And many people would be having a question about this teaching especially teaching learning process, especially in this pandemic period. And we are very much equipped. Uh, and uh, since the last one and a half years, uh, we were offering uh, all our courses in the online mode. Of course, the final year students could come to the campus and complete their project in the offline mode. And any sort of uh, worries regarding uh, how effective is this teaching learning process, the whatever we have achieved in the last one and a half years, uh, we have developed all the courses in the online mode and we have conducted and evaluated all the courses um, very effectively. And we also have some of the faculty also have these YouTube channels uh, where the courses, the students at their pace can uh, uh, learn the content in the courses. So with that, uh, I think I have given an overview of the activities of the chemical engineering department, our strength, and our commitment to the students and to the society. And I would like to thank uh, all the participants for the patient hearing. And I'll be happy to take the questions towards the end of this uh, webinar. Thank you again, once again. Thank you very much, Dr. Jainarayanan, for the brief and informative uh, talk highlighting the strengths of the department. I think some of the things that our department is doing are so novel. I think many of the students probably have not grasped uh, its significance, but as you get more familiar with the department, I think you will all come to know the live-in labs, the collaborative projects, the research and all that. You can actually be part of all of them. Uh, it is a, a fantastic opportunity, which I'm sure many students who join Amrita are going to 
make use of. Now I call upon Dr. Meera to kindly speak to us about the career outlook for chemical engineering in the 21st century. There are also a couple of questions that are relevant to her talk in the chat, and I'm sure that she'll, through her talk, she is going to answer them. And then later on, we'll have specific question answers in the interactive session. So over to Dr. Meera. Thank you, Dr. Nikhil. And uh, uh, let me extend a very warm welcome to all participants. One of the questions uh, students and parents have in mind would be, what are the opportunities for a chemical engineering graduate? So in today's session, I will present an overview of the career opportunities in chemical engineering. So let us, in this, let us begin by understanding what is chemical engineering and what chemical engineers do. The Oxford Dictionary defines chemical engineering as a branch of engineering concerned with the design and operation of uh, chemical, industrial chemical plants. Uh, chemical engineering, uh, in some contexts, we are also called uh, process engineers. Okay? The chemical engineering involves processing of lower value raw materials or resources into higher value products in a safe, cost effective, and environmentally responsible way. Chemical engineers utilize their knowledge in science, engineering, mathematics, and economics to understand how to alter the chemical, biochemical, or physical state of a substance to create everything from, say, face creams to fuels. Uh, we design uh, processes and equipment for large-scale production, uh, plan and test methods for manufacture of products. Uh, we use our skills to investigate uh, problems and design solutions for issues such as uh, safety and sustainability. If you look around you, almost everything uh, you see will somehow be a product of chemical engineering. Chemical engineering is the broadest branch of engineering that bridges the gap between uh, science and manufacturing. Chemical engineers work in a wide variety of uh, industries and major employment sectors include petroleum and petrochemicals, uh, industrial chemicals, pharmaceuticals, food and agriculture, consumer goods, uh, electronics, health and hygiene products, energy and environmental management. Uh, the services of a chemical engineer are not limited to chemical and allied industries. They are employed in diverse fields like materials development, design and construction of process plants, equipment manufacture, information technology, uh, consultancy, financial services, etc. Now, coming to the hiring trends for chemical engineers, uh, this slide shows uh, the uh, current uh, hiring trends. Uh, for chemical engineers. As you can see, fuel and uh, chemical industry accounts for majority of the placement, uh, followed by um, oil and petrochemicals. And there are a number of students, a, a good number of students who go for uh, higher education. So uh, we have seen the diverse sectors where chemical engineers work, and they have different roles in the industry, uh, such as. Uh, Process design. Uh, process design that involves selection of series of processing steps, processing parameters, and uh, their integration to form a complete manufacturing system. Chemical engineers are involved in uh, development of processes that involve scale up from lab scale uh, uh, synthesis to commercial scale production and the technology transfer that happens uh, between the lab scale uh, to the commercial scale. Uh, chemical engineers are involved in uh, construction, erection, commissioning, and troubleshooting of uh, process plants. Many chemical engineers work as uh, process or production engineers in commercial manufacturing plant in either their routine operation or in process improvement. Many chemical engineers go for a career in technical sales, specializing in scientific and technologically advanced products and services. Another rewarding career option is in research where you develop or design new products and technology improve existing uh, technological process, processes, materials, and equipment, and create new and innovative technologies. In Amrita, you'll see a 
plenty of such uh, uh, such activities happening uh, in our research labs and you will uh, get an opportunity to be part of uh, these activities in different areas that you will uh, you will find interest so uh, chemical engineers have a significant role in addressing future challenges in global warming sustainable development healthcare and environment the future of global industrial world is in developing a new relationship between humans and nature which is not extractive but enriching and uh, and is not consumption centric but conservation centric uh, to achieve such a transformation across industries varying from aerospace to energy and electronics chemicals to textiles and cosmetics to pharmaceuticals chemical engineering has a strategic role to play it will lead the way in reconfiguring conventional processes with new technologies such as uh, nanotechnology biotechnology and information technology this result for example if you see in the agricultural sector will enable us to repurpose the sector uh, not only as a source of food uh, but as a uh, source of a full range of new materials that can uh, that can be uh that can serve as um, alternative renewable resources for energy construction chemicals drugs polymers pharmaceuticals and fibers like this uh, there are opportunities in every field that i uh, touched upon in my earlier slides to equip you with the knowledge and skills required to excel in these roles our curriculum is designed to give you strong foundation in science mathematics core engineering and of course computing uh, now coming to the opportunities of chemical engineers in india the chemical industry in india is highly diverse has been steadily growing and is projected to reach 304 billion dollars by 2025 uh, clocking an annual rate of uh, growth of 15% the chemical sector is expected uh, to be the employment generator for uh, millions thanks to the rising domestic demand uh increasing its export setting up of uh, petroleum chemicals and petrochemical investment regions and uh, government policies on uh, foreign investment and initiatives of uh, like make in india and atmanirbhar uh, uh, bharat abhiyan now if you look here you can see the location of major chemical plants in different states of india and uh, naturally the question will come where can you expect to be placed after your btech the opportunities are plenty public sector undertakings like indian oil corporation bharat petroleum hindustan petroleum national fertilizers limited bawa atomic research center engineers india limited etc are attractive options for graduate engineers in the public sector uh, public sector the recruitment in these public sector units are through graduate aptitude test in engineering or gate but there are other psus like hindustan insecticides or indian rare earths who have their own recruitment processes our curriculum and syllabus are designed to equip you to take up these competitive exams and our students have been placed in psus like iocl hpcl and igcar apart from the psus there are several well established uh, chemical companies in the private sector where graduate chemical engineers are employed uh due to paucity of time i am not listing out the companies in private sector but will give you a glimpse of the uh, core companies including multinational companies that have recruited amrita students they include reliance industries dow chemicals 3m axonobel hindustan unilever saint gobain asian paints burger paints tata advanced materials titan ge technip uh, petrofac etc speak ramco cements cumi to name a few uh, our students uh, have also opted for non core uh, placement in companies like infosys cognizant uh, ibm new sigma uh, banking uh, federal bank etc uh, we encourage our students to take up internships to gain industrial exposure and uh, here is a partial list of companies our students have interned so for that say uh, come to the end of my presentation thank you all and i wish you all a very uh, successful future thank you
thank you uh, thank you very much dr meera we now move into the interactive session with the alumni may i request uh, gupta to kindly turn on your video and give us a two minute introduction about what your role is in your company okay good evening everyone uh, so uh, my name is ptr gupta and i am currently working as assistant production manager at uh, panipat refinery of indian oil corporation limited uh, so basically i work in the production department and specifically in the gasoline production unit uh, so i have around 5 years of experience and uh, uh, i am more than happy to answer all your questions and uh, i have seen there are few questions i will try to answer them live thank you very much gupta we have the other uh, alumnus uh, gopika krishna kumar uh, she unfortunately is not able to join us although she is on the call uh, perhaps she is listening to us but uh, unfortunately she cannot join us because she is uh, in uh, an personal emergency Uh, but uh, I am sure that uh, she will be happy to answer your questions. You could contact her. She has shared her contact information. Um, I, I would like. I would request the uh, host to, to kindly share a video which Gopika has shared with us earlier. So uh, you know that would stand as her introduction. Engineer. I uh, did my chemical engineering from Amrita School of Engineering, Etimade. Uh, 2014 18 batch and then i got placed in apple smith where i still work uh, i am the product line manager for clinker cooler systems which is in the cement industry uh, not to go too much into what i do but uh, it's an epc company and do look it up if you if you're interested um so yeah i do i do owe amrita a lot especially for the job uh, i know it's a very cliche thing to say but it's it's the job Uh, I had the best four years of my life in there. Uh, the campus, the faculty, the friends, the knowledge, um, the experience is just amazing. And uh, and it's unfortunate at a time like this that a lot of you are not able to experience it the way we did. But um, I I hope you get to do it. So good luck for you guys. Um, but yeah, being a chemical engineer is fun. I know I had interacted with a few juniors and. Uh, especially when you start out you're not so sure about what it is and uh, if it's the right thing because it's it's not a very common uh, stream of engineering and a lot of people are usually skeptical about it but uh, i i think it was one of the best choices that i ever made um it it's fun and it's it's a community of its own when you get out of college you realize it like in my company it's just i think less than 20% of us are uh, chemical engineers but then when we meet each other and when we introduce ourselves as chemical engineers we get all excited and we take so much pride in it um <laughs> rightly so um so yeah but it can be annoying like you might have to explain to a lot of people what's the difference between you and a chemist uh, but yeah i guess it's just a part of it um yeah so i don't have much to say um if but if you guys need any kind of support any kind of insight um please do do reach out to me um i i have my linkedin um my name my full name is gopika krishna kumar or you can just get my contact from one of the professors we we're still in touch with some of them and uh, yeah all the best make the most out of the whole campus experience from uh, the faculty is amazing the kind of friendships that you make in these four years uh, will remain with you forever um not that i know but i'm yet to find out <laughs> um but yeah um that that's pretty much uh, i have to say uh, all the best and uh, enjoy thank you very much for sharing that and uh, gopika we are uh, definitely missing you a lot and i hope uh, everything is fine at your end uh there was one question which i think would have ideally been answered by gopika but i i think dr meera can equally answer that question which was about women in chemical engineering is this field of engineering suitable for women so yes, over so to I, dr meera yeah this is a question that normally comes up is chemical engineering good for women okay uh, i will tell you my own example uh, see in my family we are two sisters myself and my sister both of us are chemical engineers okay so um, chemical engineering uh, the opportunities for women in chemical engineering are 
uh, I don't see any difference uh, in the opportunities that uh, a girl gets and a boy gets, okay? uh, unless you restrict yourself. The, as I uh, said in my uh, presentation, the varied sectors in which you uh, you find opportunities for chemical engineer ranging from environmental management to um, uh, to healthcare to uh, to commodity chemicals. The sectors are vary, and within each each sector, there are plenty of opportunities. Like you can go into R and D, you can go into design, you can go into projects, you can go into technical sales. So uh, opportunities are plenty. So there is no um, uh, no restriction, and in fact, now uh, with uh, I, I think Gupta will be aware that most of the public sector comp uh, companies have very good policies regarding uh, employment of women engineers, uh, with uh, plenty of uh, options uh, and plenty of uh, you know. Uh, for example, if you take maternity leave, you get a six months maternity leave, and if you get uh, in even in many private sector companies, if you see. Uh, if you take a career break, you have internship program to induct you back into the uh, into the mainstream employment. So I have never found any uh, any difference or any lack of opportunity for women chemical engineers. In fact, before coming to academics, I worked in three different areas and three different companies. One was in the pesticide and insecticide uh, uh, company. The second was in rubber chemicals, and the third one was in environmental. Uh, consultancy before coming to uh, the uh, academics. So opportunities are plenty, unless you limit yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Meera. The, the next question is uh, to uh, Gupta. It is about the working conditions for chemical engineers. CSE and EC engineers get uh, nice air conditioned offices and chemical engineers have to work in dirty, stinking factories in some remote location far away, hundreds of miles away from uh, civilization. Is that true? Yeah, so uh, this is a very common question among uh, uh, like uh, chemical engineering graduates, freshly passed out graduates. Uh, so I would like to say that there are basically two profiles in a process industry. One is you have a process uh, like technical services profile and other is the operations that is the production profile. So uh, in the technical services profile also, you will have to visit, uh, you will have some kind of field job. Uh, you have a combination of both desk job and also field job. But in the operations profile, 90% uh, it is the field job and 10% it is the desk job. So uh, regarding the working conditions, I don't think uh, CS companies have a superior, uh, what to say, superior conditions. Because of the nature of the work, uh, we need to be in the field. And uh, uh, they, we can't say they are bad conditions. But uh, because uh, all those things are compensated by the fact that you are working in the core field. And also, you get to apply your knowledge on a daily basis. So the in in terms of uh, the satisfaction levels you see, I think uh, uh, like in a process engineer will have a lot of connect to their subject. In that way, it is really good. And uh, if you see in the nowadays, you have all these ergonomic related issues uh, in the software companies and all. So ideally, if you see chemical engineering, I mean process engineering jobs, you don't have that problem. You will be really fit and healthy. Uh, so not to uh, convince you, but uh, that's the that's the reality. Uh, you'll be more connect. You'll be connected to the job more, unlike the virtual things that you do that you do in the CS and software profiles. So if you have anything specific, you can uh, ask me in chat. I'll I'll be able to help you. Another question is uh, also related to Gupta. You are in a public sector company. Uh, how do students prepare for public sector jobs? Uh, at what stage do they have to prepare? What are the exams they have to take? And uh, you know, what is the help that you get in Amrita for that? Uh, yeah, like uh, uh, most of the public sector companies, uh, Maharatna, Miniratna, and Navratna companies, they recruit through graduate uh, uh, gate exam. Uh, so uh, 
the nature of the exam is that uh, it tests your uh, test taking ability apart from testing your concepts so uh, one thing is the concept part that you have to take care of uh, most of the people think gate is a different exam uh, like uh, compared from your academics that is your semester courses so basically they don't ask anything extra from your semester courses so whatever you are studying in your uh, academic courses only those concepts will be tested just that you will have to be quicker in solving the problems so your test taking ability really matters in gate exam uh, so uh, from from my experience i can uh, say that the uh, both the curriculum and the also examination pattern is designed in such a way that it tests your concept so the concept part you need not worry just the test taking part i mean the the ability to solve the questions faster all those things comes with practice so that you will have to take care uh, you have cr department at amrita that has collaboration with uh, coaching institutes apart from that you have our in house professors who, who who are helping you to solve the exams in specific to gate point of view uh, so that will help you by the end of your four, uh, fourth year uh, you will be able to give your gate exam and write and get a good rank and uh, once you get the you have a good gate score you have lot of opportunities both in terms of uh, research uh, research and also in terms of uh, jobs uh, research in the sense you can go to top institutes like uh, in us i mean abroad and also indian institute of science bangalore and also iits apart from that you also have opportunity to join this uh, oil and gas industry and also fertilizer industry all these public sector undertakings are recruiting through gate so in opportunity perspective you have a really good scope uh, for chemical engineers and one more thing is uh, chemical engineers are less in compared to uh, other uh, like branches like mechanical computer science so and also the if you see in the oil sector you have pretty good amount of vacancies for chemical engineers in that way you have a really added advantage when compared to other branches thank you so much gupta for this nice comprehensive uh, answer uh another question is uh, i think best answered by dr jainarayanan uh, it is the question related to exchange programs uh, one student has posted about whether amrita has uh, uh, connections with other uh, institutes for exchange programs he is asking about iit gandhinagar but i think we are open to uh, collaborations with other universities so could you please explain uh, that point yeah the uh, we have enough opportunities for this internships in uh, iits uh, our students have gone to iit madras ncl pune and then uh, rd pune also they have gone and apart from that we have a strong connect with many of the universities and uh, mous are also made and uh, the faculty are having connection with the professors and uh, the um, our international uh, uh, the, the department which have connect with all these universities they arrange uh, internship programs as well as exchange programs and we also have the uh, twinning program and the dual degree programs too uh, with uh, through the memorandum memorandum of understanding with many universities so that is not a problem at all depending on your preference you can opt for uh, Uh, internships in uh, uh, the institutes and universities in india as well as abroad that is not a problem at all thank you very much there is one more question that has come is it necessary to undertake petroleum engineering after chemical engineering for better career options any of the panelists could answer that petrochemical industries remain uh, the largest and highest paying uh, industries but it is not necessary that you should uh, you should uh, have a specialization in petrochemical uh, engineering or petroleum uh, engineering in fact uh, the petroleum sector uses you know uh, whatever you learn in your uh, core chemical engineering that is what uh, what is used universally across all uh, all chemical industries 
so it is not necessary but uh, if you uh, if you want to specialize in petrochemicals or petroleum it is good but it is not absolutely necessary to work in petroleum sector it is not necessary that you should have a, a higher degree in petroleum engineering am i uh, probably gupta will also be able to answer on that yeah actually i just want to add what mira ma'am has told uh, so uh, looking at my a company's example i mean the place where i am working 90% I think Gupta is Gupta I think we spent. lost your connection yeah maybe if the bandwidth uh, is low you can turn off your video and focus on the audio no you are you are audible now Gupta am i audible now sir yes yes yes, yes. Uh, it's clear right yes yep clear now yes. yeah so uh, if you take my company as an example uh, indian oil uh, so 90% of the process engineers are chemical engineers only 10% of the engineers are petroleum engineers so uh, it's it's just a myth that you have to do petroleum engineering after chemical engineering to get into oil and gas industry and apart from that uh, in amrita itself we you have courses dedicated to petroleum engineering so uh, that will be uh, one thing is you will not have any problem in terms of entry into a pet oil and gas industry apart from that uh, since you have an undergraduate course attended on petroleum uh, it will have an added advantage so uh, not only in the knowledge uh, perspective but also in the uh, your ability to crack the interview so in that way chemical engineering serves both the purposes chemical engineers are called universal engineers yeah, yeah. Uh, we see that Sorry. some people have raised their hands i request those people to kindly type their questions in text it is easier for us to manage the time we don't have too much time so please forgive us for not uh, allowing you to uh, take the mic and speak uh, um, another interesting Nikhil. question has come up which is how okay. can a chemical engineer contribute exactly. to the environment exactly i wanted yeah. you to answer that question yeah <laughs> okay if you had been paying attention to the slides shown by professor jainarayanan you would have realized how closely our department works on environment related problems in, in terms of research okay in terms of research our department faculty as well as students are involved in research that is related to finding solutions for environmental problems that includes developing of materials developing of uh, energy technologies like solar energy like energy storage technologies that is in the area of materials uh, recycling of uh, plastics and other waste products that is on the material side apart from that our department goes out of its way to engage with the community uh, at large you know in villages working with tribal communities the uh, lemon grass distillation you know distillation is very much uh, a subject that is core to chemical engineering using that concept uh, to uh, to enhance the livelihood of tribal communities that is what our department has been doing so really sky is the limit if you are asking how a chemical engineer can uh, work for the environment my answer again is sky is the limit I, i being universal engineers i don't think there is any other engineer who is better qualified to work for the environment than a chemical engineer no, i would also... like to add uh, yeah. what you uh, in on, a, on an industrial scale you know how chemical engineers contribute to environment the design uh, and uh, operation of uh, uh, the effluent treatment uh, plants in industries in all sorts of industries whatever kind of industries you are Uh, that is done by chemical engineers okay chemical engineers uh, work on uh, you know uh, designing processes with zero discharge or and maintaining uh, the uh, the uh, acceptable levels of contaminants uh, or reducing uh, 
uh, and um, uh, mitigating the effects of these uh, harmful contaminants to the uh, atmosphere uh, environment. Okay. Uh, thirdly, we develop materials uh, from alternate sources. Uh, for example, uh, there are a lot of uh, companies working on alternate fuels. You know, most of the fuels are fossil fuels, uh, and its exploitation is uh, eventually going to harm the nature. So, chemical engineers work on industrial scale to to develop alternate fuels. Okay? So, like this, uh, there are plenty of sectors in, in the industry where chemical engineers work to uh, uh, to contribute to saving and uh, saving environment and ensuring sustainable sustainable uh, commercialization and development uh, of uh, processes and materials i would also like to add many of our students you know, after their bitech uh, in chemical engineering they move for ms program in environmental science and environmental management in various uh, universities abroad and they are all placed very well after their uh, uh, courses in uh, uh, this environmental management and uh, another area is the pollution control and you have enough jobs in uh, india itself and uh, if you see the pollution control board many of the engineers working there are all, are all chemical engineers so it is definitely a very important avenue for uh, chemical engineers thank you so wonderfully explained uh, that that question uh, this, as uh, professor jainarayan was saying there are many students many of our chemical engineering students today are actually working in some environment related field they have uh, gone for their higher studies abroad uh, in a field that is closer to the environment and they are actually working in that field so yes uh, that's a good one Uh, another question is what skill uh, uh, is it easy to study chemical engineering because uh, some people feel that uh, uh, chemical engineering is a very difficult subject and that studies are very difficult at amrita so what's your take on that uh, maybe we can start with gupta being a student at the receiving end uh, yeah you've been a student over here so you could probably answer that is it was it really that difficult Uh, or is is chemical engineering more difficult than other branches like ece or cse or something like that and uh, what about amruta yeah uh, sir uh, regarding the difficulty of the chemical engineering courses uh, basically what uh, i th- i suppose both of them most of them are uh, aspirants uh, so uh, chemical engineering requires a background in mathematics background in physics and a background in chemistry so it has it is the only branch it ha- which requires uh, like fundamentals from all the basic sciences uh, and it it is really uh, what to say uh, uh, it is really interesting to see how these three things uh, combine in chemical engineering and apart from that within the chemical engineering if you see uh, we have the basic heat transport momentum transport and mass transport uh, so in these things uh, the concepts that are used in the in the core chemical engineering subjects uh, are so uh, like what to say they are so uh, used in the real life that many operations research uh, uh, like after the bachelor's degree you people do in operations research though in all these big big am- amazon and also all uh, other uh, logistics companies and also design companies all these people employ operations engineers and op- operations research profile includes optimization problems so all these optimization problems are linked to the concepts the way in which they are designed are linked to the concepts in the chemical engineering so just not uh, about the btech uh, chemical engineering course you will have really good scope after the uh, btech program in the operations research uh, chemical engineering uh, concepts are very much used uh, so that is one thing and regarding the difficulty uh, i don't think uh, uh, provided the uh, resources you have like you have really good professors who are willing to contribute their time and also they are willing to come to your level to explain things that you may not understand at the first 
place. So in that way, apart from that, you have uh, research facilities, you have lab facilities. So it becomes very easy uh, to navigate through the course. So that's all, sir. Thank you, Gupta. Would doctors Mira or Jainanan uh, would like to add to that regarding yeah. the difficulty? Most of the time, no people. When you ask what is chemical engineering, people think it is some form of chemistry. Yeah, it is not like that. It is not. Uh, uh, it is not chemistry alone. We use a lot of chemistry, especially uh, physical chemistry. We use um, physics application of physics. We use mathematics. We use economics also. Yeah. So uh, it is uh, uh, as we. I said in my presentation, or you use these principles of science to design uh, process equipment for production. So, if you understand the um, uh, the uh, fundamentals, you know, it, it. I don't think it is a difficult subject. It is how we apply uh, our concepts, how we have the clarity of uh, concepts uh, that matters. So we Sir, have already question. crossed the time limit. Yeah. Yes, okay. uh, Gupta, please go ahead. I think uh, someone has uh, asked the question, does becoming a chemical engineering and getting placed in core competencies require us to be continue exposed to chemicals? Yes. Uh -huh. Could you take that? Yeah. So just to give an example, uh, uh, the oil and gas, the uh, fuels producing industry, uh, that is a petroleum refinery is the least pro pro uh, least polluting industries if you look at all the industries the usage of those products that we produce causes pollution but in terms of pollution if you see we are the least polluting industry so it's not like uh, if you are placed in a software company even even they are using uh, servers which requires large amount of energy and all and also expo getting exposed to chemicals there are a lot of proper uh, systems in place to minimize the to 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 minimize all the uh, emissions into the atmosphere. Uh, so you need not worry about that. It's almost e equivalent to avoiding going outside, uh, worrying that we'll face an accident. So the probability is very less uh, of the occupational hazards and all. Uh, so that is what I wanted to say on this topic. I agree with Gupta. Actually, I start, started my career in one of uh, what one what we'll call as you know uh, poisonous industry. I started working in uh, in, the, uh, in insecticides and pesticides where our raw materials were sodium cyanide and things like that. Okay. Very very hazardous. But there are protocols and systems in place uh, to minimize. Or there is actually no exposure at all uh, of these hazardous chemicals to the uh, people handling it. So uh, it is very, very safe. Another question which has come, is it compulsory to have a post-graduation in chemical engineering along with UG to get a job? So I uh, think Gupta, no. Gupta is the right person to answer. I will also just say, you're all encouraged to take this gate exam to get into this uh, public sector undertakings. And I think Gupta is uh, an example for that. I, I'm not sure whether Gupta has gone for a PG program after that. I'm not very sure. Uh, <laughs> so maybe, uh, Gupta, you can answer that question too. Yeah, see, if you are, your uh, whole purpose is to get mm -hmm. placed or get a good job in a, a process industry, then you don't need an undergraduate, uh, like Correct. you don't need a post-graduation along with undergraduate. Post uh, a post graduation is highly recommendable when you are going for a research. Uh, apart from uh, post graduation and PhD, generally people do when they are interested in research. But some uh, jobs uh, that are more specialized in nature requires uh, post graduation. Uh, so more ninety percent of the jobs in uh, process industries uh, look for only undergraduate uh, undergraduate students. Correct. Nikhil sir, uh, uh, yes. Yeah, I just wanted to tell about the scope of uh, scope for chemical engineers. Is that okay? If we have time, that's okay. Yeah, also. yeah, yeah. We have already crossed the the allotted time, but maybe you could you could perhaps uh, share your views and then we'll wrap up after that. 
ఓకే సార్ సో ఐ వుడ్ లైక్ టు డిస్కస్ అబౌట్ ద లైక్ ఆపర్చునిటీస్ ఫర్ కెమికల్ ఇంజనీర్స్ ఆఫ్టర్ దే పాస్ అవుట్ ఫ్రమ్ ద బీటెక్ సో ఇఫ్ యూ లుక్ ఎట్ ద టైప్ ఆఫ్ ఇండస్ట్రీస్ యూ హ్యావ్ జాబ్ ప్రొఫైల్స్ వేరింగ్ ఫ్రమ్ డిజైన్ కంపెనీస్ అండ్ ఆల్సో ద టెక్నాలజీ లైసెన్సింగ్ కంపెనీస్ and also the operations companies so all these all these companies employ chemical engineers and they are the core of their business because uh, starting uh, you need chemical engineer uh, with mechanical electrical uh, they can find a substitute but for chemical engineers they can't find a substitute uh, because the core knowledge is very much needed and your core skills are put to use in the actual job you are doing Uh, so in when coming to the uh, oil and gas industries you have companies like uh, indian oil hpcl bpcl reliance and also apart from that you have uh, like nfl national fertilizers limited and in the private sector you have reliance all these big companies like uh, if you come if you look at uh, design companies you have uh, eil and also you have other bechtel and all very big companies all of them employ uh process engineers chemical engineers as process engineers and apart from that i would like i would like to highlight one thing now that all of you must be hearing that data is the new oil kind of uh, uh, theories and all uh, so nowadays there are a lot of jobs that are based out of data so uh, like artificial intelligence internet of things and also machine learning fault diagnosis uh the combination of chemical engineering and this big data is a very rare combination so all these technologies are going to evolve in future so if you, uh, the people with the chemical engineering skills and this uh, data skills are rare are like they are very much they will be very much in uh, the uh, in demand in future so opting a chemical engineer yes sir gupta are you still there okay yeah yes yeah, sir okay so uh, we are now at the end of the webinar for today uh, and unless uh, professor jainarayanan or uh, professor meera would like to say something uh, we'd like to wrap up actually dr nikhil i have given the email ids of all the panelists okay so that, uh, sir kindly share it with everyone i hope you have shared only the first and panelists uh, i am i'm doing that no yeah. i have shared in the chat no uh, no that is for host and panelists i will share it no, with no. everyone okay. okay 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 so we are happy to take any questions say you can send through email and uh, we will uh, uh, answer all those emails and all your doubts you can get it clarified and we are happy to uh, receive any emails from your side okay so thank you very much it was a great pleasure to uh, to have all of you participate in this session and uh, thank you very much for asking all those questions i know that we could not answer all the all the questions because of the constraints on time but as professor jainarayanan has said uh, you can feel free to contact us and uh, we will try our best to help you out there are i see that there are some admission related questions we deliberately did not take up those questions because those questions can be directed to the admissions office we wanted to have this session more about questions related to chemical engineering the career options in chemical engineering and some of the subject matter related questions that students might have so that is why we could not answer those questions but those questions would be it would be most appropriate to direct them to the admissions office and uh, we will we will put that link also in the chat for the admissions office and you please feel free to contact them re regarding all those questions about sliding from one branch to another about what scores on the a triple e exam are required and all that i think they will uh, definitely answer your questions so with that said uh, i take this opportunity to thank all of you once again and uh, my faculty colleagues our dear alumni gupta and gopika 
and so many others like them spread out all across the world and who are always connected to us in some way or the other nowadays it's easier to be connected thank you very much have a good evening thank you everyone thank you thank you sir and all the thank best thank you